All right, I've got John here from Rhino Ag, and he's going to tell us a little bit about their products. So I first became familiar with Rhino Ag because uh, Tractor Time with Tim running that TS10 on a little 2038R, and it, yeah. as a it, to me, it seemed like it's impossible to run a mower that big on a tractor that small, but the the uh, bat wings give you a little bit more ability to do that. But so I've been really curious about what else Rhino Ag has to offer. So you guys kind of specialize mostly in brush cutting or? We do. Uh, we've been in business since 1930. We, we started out doing a lot of dirt work with rear blades. So many of you may have even heard about the Rhino rear blade, the big Rhino and the little Rhino. But for many years, we've been focusing mainly on brush cutting and fine finish mowing, making tall grass short. And so when I walk around here, everything is too big and too heavy looking for my tractor. But you guys do make them for us guys with the smaller tractors, right? You have you have something all the way down to a subcompact or probably mine's a 38 horse John Deere. Yeah, absolutely. So Rhino does make its living on the roadsides, mowing the heavy duty stuff, mow, reclaiming pasture land. But we didn't forget about the guys with the small subcompact tractors. So your 2038 or 2030 mower we make a single spindle, what we call a single spindle mower, mounts on the three-point hitch, and we make those in four, five, and six-foot mowers, and that's clearly right in the game that you're looking at. So nowadays, there's a hundred companies that make brush cutters. Yeah. So from your perspective, why would someone want to choose a rhino egg? We weld these right here in Illinois, right here in the United States, so that's so important to me to represent a company that is right here in the states we do buy some parts from overseas i'll have to say but we have craftsmen and women right in gibson city illinois who take pride in their job weld them weld them up there and we distribute all around the united states that's the thing that i like about rhino and so i've got another yeah. brand of brush cutter that hasn't held up very well i bought an economy brush cutter yeah and what I, there are points in the market for an economy product there sure is built product and I've kind of focused on this as being one of the heaviest built and uh, looks like a great product. Sure. So, so the mower behind us here is a TW37. That's three inch cut. The 30, the three means three inch cut capacity. It'll take down a tree seven feet wide. So yes, that's the one we show at the shows. But the TW14 or 15 is a one inch cut five foot wide mower that would go right on your tractor. One of the other guys told me that you didn't bring it because you kept having trouble building them fast enough for the demand on them. It's amazing. Truckload after truckload go out of Gibson City with those TW10 series all lined up on flatbed semis heading out to go to all parts of the nation. We can't build them fast enough. And so what size tractor would you need to run this one? At least 60 horsepower. We don't want the tail wagging the dog. We want to make sure that the tractor's stable enough to pick up that size more. That's 2,000 pounds worth of cutter behind the tractor, no popping wheelies. So you're, you guys focus a lot of attention on brush cutting. What other kinds of implements do you still make? So at Rhino, we do rear blades still, which is our bread and butter from 1930. So we make rear blades that fit your tractor as well. As long as we, as, as well as we distribute a lot of uh, landscape products, uh, rear rock rakes, uh, pulverizers, box scrapers, driveway scrapers, rear tine tillers. The rear tine tiller we have right next to us is painted in New Holland blue. We'll paint them the color of your tractor if you want us to. Yep. And so if someone's watching this right now and they said, boy, howdy, I want one of those Rhino Ag cutters. How are they going to go about getting it? 10-4, you're going to talk to your local Rhino dealer and to find them, You'll check out www.rhinoag.com. Check us out on Facebook. You'll check out Rhino Ag's YouTube channel. Hey, and see me telling you how to adjust clutches and how do you do a different few things. Don't have my hat on, but you'll notice me. Awesome. Well, I really appreciate you taking time to talk to us. That's great. Let's get, let's get some Rhino stuff on the back of his tractor. That's what I'm talking about. So I thought I had met everyone here all the youtubers just ran into a a big channel that i didn't know much about is ryan from how farms work how are you guys doing and uh he's meeting at the rhino ag booth are you here all week i'm here 10 to 4 today oh. tomorrow we're walking around the show this is dad's first time at 
uh, the National Farm Machinery Show, so we wanted to make sure he had time to walk around and check out a couple of his favorite booths. Hey, he plays with the big tractors, though. <laughs> Oh, yeah. Hey, it was really nice to meet you, though. It was nice to meet you, too. Hey, it's Brock here from Rock Hill Farms. I'm out here at the National Farm Machinery Show today. We're going to walk the whole show, and I'm going to show you guys everything that I think is interesting or that I think you guys might like. So, I've already ran into a bunch of my favorite YouTubers. We're going to say hi to some of those as well, and should be a lot of fun. So, I think the first place I want to go is the Solatrack booth. Select track. Almost said it wrong. And look at what they've got going on with electric. So I just walked up to the Select Track booth, and they've really been making waves in the compact tractor market, being the first that I'm aware of electric tractor to come to market with this 25 horsepower. So when I talk about electric power equipment on my channel, mm -hmm. it's like talking about politics. People, <laughs> people are very uh, polarized sometimes yes. on one side or the other, and I just want some basic information. So. First, this is a, like a replacement for a 25 horse tractor. Correct. And and just to echo up off your uh, your first comment, this is a tractor. There's nothing political, no agenda here, right? I mean, the last time I checked, tractors do tractory things, and so do we. Yeah, and I can definitely just right off the bat see some advantages for a certain market. But who do you think for this tractor right here is an ideal customer? Well, because it is a direct replacement, it, it's good for anyone. So you have. You know, your uh, hobby farmers, your homesteaders, uh, you have uh, equestrian owners, equestrian centers because we're quiet, uh, governments, municipalities, school systems, um, you know, nurseries, landscapers, uh, greenhouse operations. Really, so anywhere you would use a traditional 25 horsepower tractor, you can use this. I know Tractor Time with Tim's been doing some tests on it and he's been getting some pretty good results comparing this to a 25 horse diesel. So the next thing is, what is a standard runtime? And I know it can depend on the task you're doing. For but. sure. Well, like anything else, right? The harder you work something, the quicker you're going to pull down your, your power source, uh, just like with an electric or diesel. So if you're really working the tractor hard, you can expect three to four hours of constant work out of it, like pulling a rotary mower or a tiller or something. Uh, but if you're doing light duty stuff, pulling wagons, cleaning stalls, you could get maybe almost a day out of it. I think at the initial release of this, in my mind, I think this is a great option. Maybe if you put a couple hundred hours a year on your tractor, I kind of think uh, someone who's putting thousands of hours on it, they might be have a hassle with the um, with ch needing to charge it. But if you, an average homeowner, probably isn't going to run the battery down in one day. That's correct, right? I mean, so you're looking at, the, the average homeowner, the, the homesteader, the weekend warrior, you know, they're not going to put a lot of hours on them. And this is a great alternative for them. You know, when you disconnect the battery supplies and you leave the tractor and you come back to it, and you turn them on, you've got your full power, right? Uh, but on the flip side of that, we're actually seeing opportunities. We're selling these into commercial applications like a large nursery where they're running, you know, 100 or 200 tractors out there. Well. They'll take and run one shift with the electric tractor pulling wagons. Uh, the laborers can all communicate safely to one another over because it doesn't make any noise. And there's and they're saving a lot on fuel, right? I mean, that's that's a big thing. So I started off, I was trying to be negative. Now let's talk about some re <laughs> other reasons that you would want one. That's right. Because number one, like, it sounds like a small thing, but I don't like carrying diesel cans around or storing it or after. I have a big diesel tank. I have to go fill that up. And mm -hmm. so there's a, a big hassle you save. You mentioned it. it's not noisy. Nope. We run about 40 decibels quieter than a convention, uh, conventional tractor. So literally this convention hall that we're in right now is as loud, if not louder, the ambient noise than what this tractor operates at. So besides not annoying your neighbors, you're protecting <laughs> your hearing. You that is correct. hearing protection. And it's got immediate torque. Yep. It's you, got instant torque. You don't have to start this and let it warm up for 10 minutes nope. or anything like that. So I can see the advantages. Now, right now, where are you selling this tractor? So right now we're setting up and recruiting dealers all across the U.S. Um, so right now, if you're a dealer and you'd like to become a dealer, www.selecttrack.com. Uh, we are, so we're recruiting dealers all across the U.S. In open areas where we don't have a current dealer, 
we will sell direct and support that tractor with our own dedicated team. Because the next objection, back to the negativity, the next objection is going to be, well, this is new. I won't, if something breaks, I won't be able to get any support. Well, that's right. That's why we're going with a blended approach, right? Where we've got our own field support staff, but they can't take care of all of it. That's why we're going through traditional dealers, tractor dealers, power equipment dealers, to have the level of support. You know, they're required to keep special tools. They're required to do training. They're required to have parts on hand to become a dealer. And as far as everything outside of the fact it doesn't have a diesel engine on it, <laughs> everything else is the same, right? It, it's your PTO, your yep. three-point, your hydraulic fluid, your couplers, all that's just a tractor. standard. It's all a tractor, just a normal tractor. It just, again, operates quieter with zero emissions and with instant source and performance. I think there's no question <laughs> that there's a future that has electric compact tractors being popular, and then we'll see how long it takes to get into the bigger machines. Right. But I think this is definitely the future and it's coming. So well good. That win is we're very we're excited. You know, we're the first to market in North America. Um, you know, we we are we're excited about the product and basically just spreading the word that there is a cleaner alternative out there. Well, um, congratulations on the success you awesome. had. Thank you. I appreciate you taking time to talk. Thank you, thank you for the time. We're gonna head down to the TYM booth right now because in about five minutes, they've got their big YouTube meetup. Daniel's over there. We all make jokes because he has a line. This is the line to meet Daniel Owens. I'm about to break the rules here, which are don't record someone when they don't know they're being recorded. But you'll see Hank Hamilton is the same guy in person as he is on video. If I felt better, I'd be twins. <laughs> yeah, that means I feel so good, they need to be two of me. Oh, you're in the line to see Daniel there for a minute. Yeah, I, I was making a joke about the fact that uh, his line goes all the way out. Yeah. I mean, I thought about going to get my camera so that I could just kind of film that. Oh, yeah. I told them we were going to come down here and see who had the longest line, but it, it's not you and it's not me, so. No, it's not. Well, it's only Daniel, really. So you, you guys don't know, this is Evan from Country View Acres. Here's Tony. Hank's right there. And then Stony Ridge is on past him. And so. Nathan's in there, too, from out of the woods. Yeah, great group of guys. We're having a good time today. As I turn here, you'll see Mike from Dirt Perfect and then Courtney from Good Works Tractors. Ask Tractor Mike was over here for a while too, and it really was great getting to know these guys better. And I ran into my one of my best friends and one of my favorite YouTube channels. This is Tony from Tony's Tractor Adventure. I'd say 90% of you know who he is, but just in case you don't, tell them who you are real quick. So I'm Tony with Tony's Tractor Adventure. My wife, Tanya, and I, we're building our homestead. We're, we've got into saw milling. We actually just built a greenhouse, so we're gonna eventually work our way over into nurseries and we that's the plan anyway but we're we're cutting our homestead out of the woods ourselves and doing me and her do 90 percent of everything we, we don't quite hire anything out hardly at all i think a, a roof on a barn is the only thing that we have not done everything else we do ourselves so it's awesome content and if any of you guys are in the louisville area for the next three days you can see tony here at 10 a.m at the tym booth so 10 30 yeah i got to have my, my my beauty sleep. I need all of it I can get. All right, I guess we need to swing through the John Deere booth, see what they've got going on. Here we go. This looks like what I need. I've said since I started, the ideal tractor to me is the 4066. Hey, little bug. They are proud of it, but it's. Hey, it's a nice machine. Kubota is one of the few brands that I have not really featured in a video or at one of these farm shows, but I promise you guys I'm going to get one of their reps on camera with me. Walking through their booth today, I was kind of impressed with their side-by-sides. I'd love to get a chance to drive one of these around. I'm in a big city, which is uncomfortable for me, but this thing looks like a luxury vehicle. Extended cab, six person. I think if I called an Uber today, this might be what picked me up. A lot of you have probably seen I mounted an electric winch on the back of my tractor with the receiver mount. And it's fine, but it barely pulls harder than the tractor. 
So I think a huge upgrade, and it is more expensive, but a huge upgrade would be getting one of these actual skidding winches. And they're not cheap, but I think they'd definitely be worth it. And the only reason I don't have one is that I have a skid loader. You guys know I'm in the market for some new mowers this year, and there's a lot of great brands out there, and I spent quite a bit of time looking at them, but I decided not to go too deep into mowers on this video. So I've been coming to this show for a little while, and I come across this booth today, and there's a wide range of attachments here, but the brand is Ironcraft, and I thought, I've never heard of this. Is this a new company? And so I've grabbed someone who can maybe answer that for us. Yeah, thanks, Brock. So uh, we've been in this booth for several years. Actually, the founding company was founded in 2014. It was called Titan Implements out of Athens, Tennessee. And middle of last year, uh, maybe let me back up just a little bit. Previously, Titan name got confused with some other Titan brands and products and industries that are very similar to ours. Uh, but we actually manufacture in Athens and Decatur, Tennessee. We also have a facility in Denton, North Carolina. And we pride ourselves on focusing on American made first, and then we will outsource and we will use some parts that we can't get here. But uh, since 2014, we've been building the product. And in tw since 2014, we've been in this very booth under Titan Implements. Uh, middle of last year, we changed our name to Ironcraft and uh, we think it's really taken that confusion out of the marketplace and allowed us to display all the great products that we have. And if, just a quick story for you guys and for you as well. I saw some of your products online and in my mind I said, I think there might be two Titan attachments and I don't, I'd heard some negative things about the other one and that kind of stopped me from buying. So a rebrand's probably a good thing, but it, there's a Titan in every category, I think. It's a really, <laughs> really popular is. product name. So you want to tell me a little bit about the products you guys have? Yeah, so uh, we have three-point attachments. We've got skid steer loader attachments, and we're adding in several mini excavator attachments. We have a few, but we're adding, and we're working to expand that portfolio. All of the three-point attachments are made in Athens and Decatur, Tennessee, and then our uh, Denton, North Carolina, formerly CID. We acquired CID. Uh, middle of last year as well. Uh, we are manufacturing those in Denton, North Carolina and selling them through dealers under the Ironcraft brand. Do you guys know, anytime I can, I wanna buy something that's made in America. So that's a great part of the story. What do you think is probably your yeah. biggest market or your number one thing you sell the most of right now? So the cutters are really what, the 1205, the cutters are really what uh, we're known for. And now with the flex wing, especially if you saw the uh, red, white, and blue flex wing over here, that is what's really taken off. Uh, so that market is just expanding, just like the wings suggest. Is it just red, white, and blue today for the show, or do you sell it that way? We'll do anything the way the customer wants to. That one does have a slight price difference from a normal cutter, but uh, uh, we will sell them in, in the, the standard gray or the Kubota orange or the you know blue. We match what the customer needs. And I'm getting ready to walk around and look at some of the other stuff, but I think you just said it, but if someone wants to buy this, are they ordering it for you, from you, or is it all through dealers? It's all through dealers. We work with our dealer network very closely. Uh, you can go on our uh, website, ironcraftusa.com, and go to the dealer locator, put your zip code in, and that'll bring you to the closest dealer. Uh, and then they'll have inventory and be able to provide you with uh, pricing and availability. I'm really intrigued over here. You've got like an extendable boom brush mower for a skid loader. Yeah, it's cool. Is that a new product for you guys? or? So we've actually had it for a while, but it's kind of been at the back of the booth. We brought both of the, the offset flail mower for the three point and the swing boom mower for the skid steer up to the front. And unlike a lot of cutters, you do not have to have high flow for that one. So you can go 90 degrees out, it's like 30 degrees down, extend it out, or work with it in front of you. All right, well, I'm gonna go check that out a little bit more, but I really appreciate you taking time to talk to me. Yeah, thanks Brock, appreciate it. I actually forgot to film an end for this video. So I'll wrap it up just by saying, if you like this kind of content, think about subscribing to the channel. I come to a lot of these shows and I review a lot of equipment but I also just record a lot of videos using my tractor and my skid loader 
on my own property and getting work done. So I'm excited for weather to warm up so we can get back to that. Thanks for watching and I'll see you on the next one.